Hi everybody, I'm Sherry Seligson, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a science curriculum writer, and I'm also an instructor providing instructional videos for sciences, middle school, high school, and even elementary levels. I love talking about science. I'm a marine biologist by trade, but I love talking about all things science, and I felt like it might be a good idea to come today and talk a little bit about mRNA. mRNA has been in the news a lot, and so it might be helpful to understand a little bit more about what that uh, molecule is and what it does in the cell so you can make better decisions for what you want to do with your family. But before I talk about mRNA, I want to talk about a little more well-known molecule called DNA. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It's a very large molecule. It's found inside, mostly inside the nucleus of your cells, and it is in the instruction manual for your cells, telling your cells having the information to tell your cells what to do, when to do it, what kind of proteins to make, and how to make them, and what, all that information. So, this right here is a basic model of, of DNA. Now, this is a very cartoon version. DNA is much more complicated looking than this. And in reality, it is coiled into what's called a double helix. So you can see this kind of looks like a ladder. It's got two basic backbones and then these little rungs in between. And then it's normally coiled up, kind of twisted like that. So that's what's called a double helix. It's not just one spiral, but it's two spirals around themselves. And then these rungs are made up of what are called nucleotide bases. Uh, there are four major bases for DNA, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And they're usually abbreviated by A, T, C, and G. And what's interesting about those is whenever on one side there's an adenine, there will always be a thymine that matches up. They're chemically fitting together and match up well together. Wherever there's a cytosine, there'll be a guanine, or a guanine, there'll be a cytosine. And so I have four little colors here. I've got red, blue, gold, and yellow. And the red and blue represent my adenine and my thymine. So wherever there's a red, you're gonna see a blue. Wherever there's a blue, you're gonna see a red. And then my guanine and cytosine are the gold and the yellow, always matched up together. And the order of these specific nucleotides provides sentences or information so the cell knows how to make proteins or what proteins to make. And so what happens is when DNA is ready to replicate itself or give the instructions, it unzips. So you see how I've got it unzipping like this. And I'm going to speak specifically about this red section here. Let's say this particular section codes for a specific protein, all right? So the DNA is going to unzip right here, and then there are other nucleotides located inside the nucleus. Notice I have right here, this happens in the nucleus. So this information is going to get copied. Wherever there's an adenine, there will be a thymine. Wherever there's a, a cytosine, there'll be a guanine. And so what will happen is those little nucleotides will come up and match up according to the opposite. It's kind of like um, a photo photographic negative of the information here. So this has one specific kind of information. This is the opposite, and that is your mRNA molecule. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. RNA is a single strand, not a double strand, a single strand of these nucleotide bases with a single backbone. And so messenger RNA comes in and makes that negative. It's copying the opposite of what the DNA code is. Once it's got that, the reason why it's called messenger RNA is it has a message now. It's gonna take this message, go outside of the nucleus, you see I'm moving from my nucleus, over to a specific little organelle called a ribosome. Now a ribosome is outside the nucleus. So now I'm, I'm outside the nucleus and I have my messenger RNA. Really quickly, though, I want you to see back into the nucleus here. Notice how the colors of my messenger RNA match up to the other side of that DNA strand. Can you see that? All right, kind of, sort of, kind of, there we go. They kind of match up because this is the opposite. Okay, so it comes out of the nucleus, travels to the ribosome. Now, here is where the proteins are going to be made. This is the information telling the cell how to make the proteins. So Around the ribosome are actually other little types of smaller bits of RNA called transfer RNA or tRNA, okay? And tRNA is located, it contains three little nucleotides, three little nucleotide sequences, whether it's 
adenine, adenine, thymine, adenine, cytosine, guanine, 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 cytosine. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of triplets like this. And so these little tRNAs are floating around and each tRNA has a specific amino acid associated with that little triplet, okay? Now what's interesting about that is amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So when you connect a whole strand of amino acids, you get a protein. And so these specific triplets code for the amino acid. So now I've got my mRNA, let me orient it so you can see it better. There's my mRNA, it has come, you know, it's that negative that came out of the uh, nucleus. It's now at the ribosome. And then this little tRNA is gonna come around and it's gonna say, oh, I match up to you right here. And so these little three, let me see if I can hold it together, are gonna match up like that, okay? You see how they match up there? Your color's matching right like that? Okay, and so then it sits like this, and then the next tRNA is gonna come around, and it's got a triplet that is the opposite, or the match to the mRNA. And when they line up like this, do you see how those amino acids are close to each other? Those two amino acids, will link together and you've got the two amino acids starting off your protein chain. The next tRNA will connect, the next tRNA will connect, bringing along its amino acids. And the next thing you know, you've got this long chain of amino acids, which is a protein, which is the protein that that original DNA section coded for. Now I only show one, two, three, four, five, six nucleotides here. There are, there are, there are way many, the smallest protein, is way many more nucleotides than that, or way many more amino acids than that. But this is just so you can understand that as those tRNAs connect to the mRNA, that's how a protein is made. So messenger RNA, mRNA is the messenger, taking the negative from the nucleus, bringing it out of the nucleus into the ribosome area of the cell, to a ribosome on the cell, and then allowing that ribosome to make the information, take that information and make proteins, okay? So that's how it works. Now, once that protein piece is made, the cell breaks down the instructions, the instructions, the mRNA, here we go, and it gets rid of them because it doesn't need them anymore. If it needs it again, more mRNA will be made from the nucleus of the cell, and that's how more proteins are made. That cell will then move the protein to where it needs to go. Now, in the specific case of the mRNA we're talking about with a virus is the mRNA is the recipe for the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to enter cells. When mRNA enters your cells, if it's injected into the muscle cells, the cells see this messenger RNA and say, oh, instructions, we need to take this over to the ribosome and make some proteins, okay? It doesn't even go in the nucleus, it can't. mRNA doesn't go back to the nucleus. So it stays at the ribosome, the tRNAs will match up and form whatever protein this mRNA is coding for, in this case, that spike protein of a virus, okay? Then, the D, this is broken down, the mRNA gets broken down like normal, and then you have a spike protein that the cell has made, which will then, it will send outside of itself, kind of saying, this is what I made, I made this, I got the code, this is supposed to go outside here. Then your body looks at it, and your body says, wait a minute, this is not a protein that's me. If I had that protein in me, it's not a sherry protein. And so your body starts to produce antibodies. Let me move out from over here so you can see me better. Um, it makes antibodies to fight those off. That is the immune response. Your body is saying, this is not human information or this is foreign information. This is not sherry. And so, uh, so it will fight that off and make antibodies. Then your body has memory cells. It remembers how it fought that off. So the next time your body sees that spike protein, it's going to be prepared to fight it off. And you're able to fight off foreign information much more rapidly. Incidentally, when someone has a, uh, is immunocompromised or they have an immunodeficiency where their body recognizes itself as being foreign, that's a problem. That's a, that's a mistake in the way that things are designed normally to work. But regarding the mRNA, there's no way that mRNA can enter a cell's nucleus. There's no way mRNA will change our official library of DNA, okay? mRNA is a copy made in the nucleus. It moves out to the ribosome, that's its job, and it stays outside of the, of the nucleus, does its job of copying, giving that information to the ribosome, so tRNA comes in, 
matches up those little, little um, amino acids to make the protein strand, and then this gets broken down by the cell. So the cell ha now has a protein and it does whatever it does with that protein. In the case of the spike protein, pops it outside of itself on the outside because this spike protein is located on the outside shell of a virus. It's not located on the inside, it's located on the outside. It's not part of the viral instructions. It's just a protein, a, a coating, if you will, of that virus. And so it takes that protein, it pops it outside, your body recognizes it as foreign and fights it off. And so then you are more prepared to fight it off when you see it again. I hope that made sense. I hope this little Mickey Mouse version, again, this is, this is cartoon compared to what actually goes on. The complexity is absolutely amazing. Our cells are machines, not just machines, but cities with instructions and things moving around. Absolutely fascinating. I hope it gets you excited to want to study more about how our cells work and the complexity of cells and of cell information. And we're still beginning to understand just some of the basics of what goes on in those cells. So hopefully again, this was instructive for you. This gave you some information. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll do my best to try to answer those questions. But again, I wanted you to be a little more informed of what mRNA is and what our cells do with mRNA. Thanks for joining me.